What's up guys? Welcome back. So we'll go back to another video in today's video I'm gonna be talking about the uh, I think the eight things this is an i8 and I like the number eight like r8 and m8 and all the good eights We're gonna go ahead and see the set the We're gonna go ahead and say and list the eight things that I don't like about the i8 and uh Honestly, I just wanted to make this video up front so I can make the video about the eight things that I absolutely love about the i8 But I'm gonna go ahead and make the things I don't like about the i8 up front because I, I bet a lot of you guys will agree with me on this And then I can show you guys why exactly I even ended up buying it um, Because of the main eight reasons I like it is absolutely insane and it made this car absolutely worth the buy So the eight things I love about this car that video should be coming out pretty soon But let's just focus on the eight things that I don't like about this car now the things that I'm gonna be mentioning that I don't like about this car I mean it, it, I mean if you can if you have this car you you shouldn't be complaining. You should be thanking God for your blessings. But for the price that you guys pay for this car, there are some things that you probably were like, why didn't BMW do? And for the money, is this really worth it for the $160,000 price tag that this particular spec came in? $160,000 for this car. Thank God I was not the first owner. But for $160,000, these are the eight issues I have with the car. So first things first, we're gonna go ahead and open up the door. Let's go ahead and just show you guys the inside. So here is the rear seats that are absolutely, not even gonna talk about that right now. But what we're trying to get to is the trunk. So we're gonna go ahead and pop the rear trunk. And coming into the trunk, guys, this is the trunk space. And uh, yeah, not all of this is the trunk space. So behind this is the actual motor. If you guys pick this up right here, this is your trunk space right here. I got a few rags, uh, my charger and everything. This can fit a medium sized luggage bag or two backpacks. It barely fit me in my dad's backpack when we went to go pick up this car. And uh, it does get hot back here when you run it in sports mode the entire time. Cause like I said guys, the engine is right here. This is where you do the spark plugs, the oil changes, everything. The engine's right here, right next to all of your luggage. And you guys might be saying, okay, what about the front? Since this is, uh, you know, since the motor's in the rear, what about the front? The front is actually occupied by the battery and is not easy to access. You actually need two people to open up this front thing. And it has all the liquids and hybrid battery systems. In order to open that, you pretty much have to have two people on either side, pull this open, pull a lever, pull a lever bring it up, put a screwdriver. It's a process just to get that front thing open. So yeah, that's the only trunk space that you have. And in a car like this with $160,000, I just feel like like Porsche, they actually made room in the rear and in the front. And this one just didn't do it. I mean, I, I understand because it's a hybrid, but still. Like if anything, guys, they probably should have got rid of these rear seats and just made more storage space. These rear seats, nobody can sit in them. I guarantee, even my brother, he's about uh, six foot. When he sits in the rear, the driver's seat needs to be up right here and he can fit back there because even his head, it, he has to like sit in a really awkward angle. Let me go ahead and show you guys. I've actually, I've actually never gotten in the rear of my car before, but uh, for, for this purpose, let's go ahead and jump in the rear. So getting in, I hope it's not too hard. Bada bing. Okay, my feet, first off, do not fit. My head space does not fit. Okay, yeah, I'm six foot two. This is impossible for me. If I was actually in this car, I would freak out. And I'm claustrophobic, so this isn't gonna work. So luckily I am the driver of this car. What a process. Yeah, so the number one thing is trunk space and the fact that they should've just got rid of those rear seats and just made more storage since this car really doesn't have any. Now the second thing um, is the interior. Now I, I know a lot, this could be very controversial, but for the money for $160,000, let me go ahead and show you guys, but for the original price tag of this car, this is the upgraded interior, which I, I love the seats. They are very nice. But if you guys look at the M cars nowadays, they're creating like the competition ones with the gaps right here and a bunch of other cool things in the seats. I mean, for their flagship BMW, I would expect more from their seats. These buttons can came out straight out of a three series. The vents, yeah, they're unique, but the dash is nothing crazy special. These came out of a three series. This pretty much came out of a three series. The bun came out of a three series. The shift, they came out of a three series. The steering wheel, if the airbag was the same, it would have came from a three series and the paddles from a three series. Even this is from a three series. So look at the interior. Nothing in here makes you feel like it's something very special. Actually, a lot of times that I'm actually in this car, I don't really feel like, oh my God, I'm in something that's completely unique, something that's completely futuristic. The interior is nice, don't get me wrong. It is gorgeous, but for the money, you would expect something like with Lamborghini standards because you could have got a Huracan used for the price of this thing new, which I didn't pay for, thank the Lord, because I would, again, I would not pay $160,000 for this car. Now, I, I saw a forum online and just a couple other things online that's saying that the 2024 model, there's gonna be a new facelifted model and uh, it's also gonna be considered the i8M. Yeah, so there's gonna be an i8M that has actually a four cylinder instead of the three cylinder and a larger battery. And you guys might be saying, still, what is a four cylinder? Well, this car pushes 360 horsepower and the four cylinder in 2024 with the upgraded battery and of course the turbochargers, is gonna be pushing about 560 horsepower rough. Now, of course, the two and other things like that, 
it's gonna push about 600 horsepower. I think that's gonna be well worth the money and that car is probably gonna be a lot of people's dream cars and that car is probably gonna hold a lot better value than this has just because of how many people were disappointed with the numbers that being said when you actually drive the car it is plenty quick for me i you know i enjoy the car but it is yeah not a supercar in terms of speed let's be real all right back to things that i don't like because i i love this car so much i just want to keep complimenting it but i gotta stick on the things that i don't like about this car i'm gonna go ahead and pan around the car so you guys can see the entire car i actually love this area i'm like out here in like a hospital thingy and uh so panels everywhere it looks super gorgeous anyway so here's the i8 i'm gonna go ahead and unlock it and i'm unlocking it with a key and uh i'm not really too too excited about this key it's a gorgeous key it's different i'm happy at least the key is not the same as a generic bmw but this key is just a standard key for a flagship bmw i'd expect them to use their special glass key with the touch screen and everything they have it on the 7 series which is cheaper than this car they have it in a few other cars i believe but they don't have it on the flagship bmw i don't get that especially this is considered a futuristic car so shouldn't they have the glass key and everything i mean like the glass key basically it has a screen on it you could turn on the car from the key you could check your Oil, you can do a whole bunch of things it's like a little tablet on your key I think it's super dope and I when I actually was buying this car I was expecting to get that key and then I saw this and I was like I mean it's just a key fob now of course Lamborghinis and all that stuff they don't have that key like a special key it's just a Lamborghini key actually some Lamborghinis come with a Volkswagen key um, this one did come with a different kind of key but it doesn't say I8 on the key anywhere and it doesn't come with that key that I already know they have which is the glass key I think maybe it comes for, with some models maybe just an option but it didn't come on this one I'm not so happy about that to be honest now the next thing which is actually one of the main reasons that i was pretty excited about this car is the fuel economy so the fuel economy when i saw the combine with the hybrid battery and the motor back here i saw that you can get a combined fuel economy of 75 miles per gallon actually i got up to 80 at one point and that's when i actually got the car fully charged at bmw and i got the keys so let me tell you guys that that does sound good but that means you have to charge it every single night now if you don't charge it you're not getting that crazy good fuel economy you're getting about 28 to 30 which is great for a bmw believe it or not that is amazing but compared to the 75 on paper you can only achieve that if you actually charge the car and you can put it in sports mode it will charge your battery but when you put it in sports mode it drains the gas so you're not really getting that crazy fuel economy. For me personally, the way I have this car parked in the garage, it is just super hard to access and charge this car. Even the way the charger needs to plug in, it needs to be plugged in directly to an outlet, no extension. So it just, it, I can't charge it at all at my house. So right now, currently I'm averaging about 28 to 30 miles per gallon. Again, now if you have a charger, it's a completely different story. Most people probably have access to a charger that's buying this car. For me personally, I, it just doesn't work in my garage, so I don't have that luxury. But you guys could be getting about 60 miles per gallon to even 75 miles per gallon. But I'm not gonna lie, I was a little bit confused because I think a three-cylinder is possible and I heard it charges the battery on its own so I was just assuming I get that crazy good fuel economy no matter what and speaking of fuel economy and uh, in terms of just saving money on gas the battery so the battery like on a Tesla Tesla range on their battery goes about I think like 350 miles and some extended versions go to like 450 miles or something crazy like that guess how far this could go just on the battery and it's a hybrid it goes 10 miles. On a full charge, all this car could take you is 10 miles. I mean, come on, like a Nissan Leaf can get you 80 miles, an i3 can get you 130 miles. Why could you guys put a bigger battery, especially considering you have all this hood space that we cannot access, and you could probably use the bottom carriage of the car. You could probably could have put a way bigger battery that could at least get you 100 miles just on the battery. And I feel like that's another reason why this car hit a bad depreciation, because neither the motor is that crazy awesome, and neither the battery is the crazy awesome combined it makes it a pretty fun car but individually both like okay something crazy now if i was to sit down at bmw executives i'd be like yo listen um i need to be in the next meeting so we are coming out to the last few things that i don't like about this car and unfortunately it has to do with the doors i absolutely love these doors but uh as you guys can see with the line right here so i'm in my parking spot right and when you're closing it you see it actually gets out of the parking spot so technically i have to park this car all the way to one side to open up my door when i'm parked right here like probably this side yeah so this is a pretty this is a pretty decent parking space but still when you open the door if there's any cars on the line on either side you can't park there especially if you have somebody else with you in the car which i didn't really factor in to be honest like on every other car you would just open up the door you know just a little bit and you could squeeze out on this car no it has to open up all the way for you to get out of the car so that's just something i don't like but again nothing to really complain about because the doors are absolutely awesome it just sucks getting out of this car and just makes you feel like you're gonna ding a car every single time you open the door and now the last thing guys i don't know if it's really considered a flaw but it's the name 
Um, I8, not particularly the name I8, but just the, the, the history and the reputation this car has. This car is loved by so many, including myself, believe it or not, after all the things I just mentioned. But it's also hated by so many. And that's because, like I said, it doesn't do anything great. It does everything good, and it looks awesome. Maybe, the, yeah, honestly, the exterior looks absolutely stunning. A beautiful, beautiful design. When you see it in person, it's completely different than in photos, in videos. Every time I look at this car from the outside, I'm like, wow, I cannot believe I'm actually driving this car. But then when you get into the inside, it's one of the store. Any, you'll see, yeah, it's very controversial. And that's the thing I don't like about the car. When you go to like a car meet, there's a lot of people that just don't like the car and will straight up say to your face, like, why did you go with an i8? You should have just got an M4. Well, it's all about preference. I got this car for particular reasons, like fuel economy. I love the fact that you can take this anywhere and you can fully charge it. And on like 50 50 mix, you could go about 70. 25 miles on a single gallon, which is pretty crazy. So in terms of fuel economy, I, this is one of the reasons why I got it. It's, it's basically like a, like a Prius, but on a beautiful car. So like, I know a lot of people, they like the idea of a Prius. I mean, come on. The idea of it's pretty cool, but the car sucks. So this car is pretty awesome, and it gets a good fuel economy, but there are two types of buyers for this car. There are normal people, non-car enthusiasts, that absolutely love this car, and just look at them like, oh my god, great fuel economy, car is gorgeous, it's a BMW, Lambo doors, futuristic style, 10 out of 10, worth the money. And then you have the car enthusiasts that know everything about the car mechanically, and they're like, for the money, the 160 grand, it's not worth it. And I'm not going to sit here and tell you guys it's worth it. I agree. It's not worth 160 grand. The price I got for this car, I'll be mentioning in the part that I actually like this video, and that's how much this car is depreciated. The price that I got it for is a whole nother story. I mean, the price that I got it for, I think, is well worth the money. We'll be talking about that hopefully in the next video, hopefully in a future video. But for this video, for the $160,000, I think this is an absolute, I don't want to diss on BMW, but I do think it's a joke. Like, honest. But yeah, guys, so basically, very controversial car. For the money, 160000 I don't think this car is worth it. I'm sitting here right now as the owner, and I just purchased this car. It is not worth $160,000. But for the used price, I think it's worth every penny. This car is absolutely gorgeous for the price that I got it for. Definitely worth the money. Does everything great for the money that I spent for the brand new price tag. Absolutely not. Right now, this car is a 2016 i8 with about nearly 40,000 miles, 39 with some change. But anywho, guys, that pretty much concludes the video. I just want to tell you guys that you know pretty much the eight things that I dislike about this car. For those of you guys who are looking out to buy an i8, a lot of the stuff I just said, you guys probably already know. Um, but I'm saying all this and I still bought it. After saying all this stuff, and I agree with everything that I said, after saying all that stuff, you guys want to see the next video and why I think absolutely this car is worth the money for the used price tag. Without further ado, guys, if you guys are excited to see that video, make sure to smash the like button. Let me know down below if I should be the next video or push it about a week and get you out some other content on my other cars. I do a whole bunch of BMW content for those of you guys who are new. 150K subscribers, guys. We're going to be doing a rebuild on this channel. 200K, we'll be doing an exotic rebuild on the channel. So make sure to smash the subscribe button. Without further ado, guys, I love y'all so much. Remember to stay humble. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out. Yeah, yeah, let's go. I ain't the first with the curse, with the thirst that I wanna be better, not worse. Man, it hurts. I'm on this earth with my words, and I put them all together in circus. I wanna have words.